The physics of sneezes is at the heart of understanding how pathogens of one individual become the pathogens of another. So without that step of transportation of the pathogens from one host to the other, there is no epidemic, there is no disease transmission. And it turned out that we don't actually understand much about that physics. So the work that we do is combining fluid mechanics to problems that are relevant in health and epidemiology to understand better how pathogens are transmitted. I started being interested in sneezes when uh, I finished a piece of work on influenza transmission. And while doing that work, what we realized is that the parameter choices to describe the contamination process from one host to another are very limited. The processes themselves are not really well known. And so when you're sitting you know, in, in the head, for example, of, of a hospital like NGH or, or else and, uh, and trying to figure out, OK, we have right now an epidemic that is ongoing. What kind of measures should I ask my sta staff to take? They are guessing right now. You're in the lab right now, which is a BL2 lab, so biosafety level two. So I'll take you all around. We're in the middle of a move, so it's a little cluttered. This is basically the microbiology corner. Here in this area, it's a lot of work uh, that entails looking at fragmentation and breakup from more fundamental level. And these are the type of cameras that uh, we used for characterizing ex violent expirations, coughs, sneezes. This particular one is basically uh, a camera that allows us to go to about a million frames per second. And the reason why we need these very high frame rates is because these events happen very quickly. So we tried all sorts of approaches to try to trigger the sneezes. Some included you know, light sensitivity, pepper, various additives. But I really wanted to achieve a natural sneeze. And so ultimately, the method that ended up being reproducible at all times was no stickling. And so no stickling is the universal method. Sneezes are actually really interesting. They're multi-phase, turbulent clouds. Uh, so there's all sorts of scales that's also involved. But at the same time, it's a complex flow because you have a gaseous phase that is coupled with droplets and eventually the final residue of these drops, which could be you know, solid residues containing the pathogens. And so there's a lot of very interesting open problems of physics and fluid dynamics embedded in it. At this point, we understand much better how sneezes and coughs actually function. The overall dynamic of contamination, so the second part of the story outward from, from the patient, is right now something that we understand quite well. The only aspects that we still are working on is to refine the question of how is that affecting the actual fate of the pathogens, ultimately. From the other side of the story, which is going backward in the host, there's still a lot of open questions, uh, but we're planning to uh, look at them once we go to phase two of the work, bringing in human subjects that are both infected and healthy, because we start then to also look at the differences in the physiology and uh, the, the lung capacity in health and infection and how all of that can modulate what we already saw in terms of emissions outside of the mouth.